The water moccasin and the copperhead are two of the most common pit vipers in the United States. In this video, I'll show you which is which and how to spot the differences. Before we get into the comparison between the water moccasin and the copperhead, let's go over this one word, Echisterdon. The word Echisterdon is both the scientific base name for the copperhead and the water moccasin. And it basically means pit viper that's found here in the USA. To make this video easy and simple, we're going to break this video down into four simple factors. Habitat, diet, behavior, and appearance. This is going to run for both snakes, so let's get into it. Let's start off with the cottonmouth, or water moccasin, but I'll just call it the cottonmouth to make it easy. To start off, cottonmouths are known to be one, if not the only, subaquatic pit viper in the state. So their home advantage is going to be in and around water, whether that be a swamp, a lake, or creek. If they're in range, they will take over that body of water. Back to range, they can be found from South Virginia all the way to Southern Illinois. Not saying that's their exact range, that's just to give you an idea of how far their range can go. Cottonmouth's diets can be different from most snakes simply due to one factor. They'll eat anything, including each other. They are cannibals, also known as Ophagus, which means snake eater. In my opinion, these snakes are exactly like tiger sharks because they're living garbage cans. Anything that they can fit in their mouth, they'll just devour and eat. And not only will these guys just eat each other, they'll eat other snakes. And they'll even resort to roadkill if they're that desperate enough. When it comes to cottonmouth behaviors, most of the time what you'll see from a cottonmouth is they'll coil themselves up in a tight ball, throw their head back, and give you a good look at that white open mouth and hence the name, that's why they're called cotton mouths. Also, what they're doing when they open their mouth, that behavior is called gaping. They're just giving you a white flash of that mouth telling you to back off. But despite that factor, these snakes are really unwilling to bite, like really unwilling. You really have to like mess with one, step on one, just get it really mad to get it to bite you. And usually it's people or another animal provoking the cotton mouth enough to bite but they're more showy, they're more showy and like, they'll, they'll like, oh, I'm going to bite you behavior, than opposed to actually striking 90% of the time. As for the overall appearance of these snakes, these snakes are massive in size, and they tend to be thicker, heavy-bodied snakes. They use that size and that white mouth to ward off anybody who attempts to mess with them. For their colors, it really all depends on where you find these snakes. Like, for example, Florida cottonmouths could be jet black, almost no banding, Meanwhile, cottonmouths where near I live down in eastern Virginia, they tend to be like really colorful and like really like almost like a dark greenish almost like to a brown if that makes sense. But it really just all depends on where you find these cottonmouths at. Meanwhile, the copperhead ranges so much more than the cottonmouth simply because they're found in my area and I don't have to drive two hours down south to go find cottonmouths. A copperhead I could walk into somebody's backyard and find. But, copperheads are so virtually found, they can be found in Antarctica. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, wherever a cottonmouth can be found, a copperhead can also be found simply because, even though they mainly inhabit woodland areas, they don't mind going for a swim every once in a while. So that's why I call the copperhead the most versatile pit viper. Mostly, the copperhead's diet mainly consists of rodents, but like I said, it's mainly where you find the copperheads. And they aren't shy to eat frogs or fish every once in a while, but mainly it's going to consist of these furry little guys. Copperheads tend to be way more twitchy than cottonmouths, as we discussed earlier, because cottonmouths are more willing just to coil up and try to play big, which is copperheads, they're more on the bitey side. They aren't afraid and actually are more willing to strike. That's to explain the twitchiness. And just a snake who doesn't like to sit still when cornered or threatened, they'll more just be repeative, like mini strikes. Like they're like a machine gun. They'll just go whap, 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 whap. Just repeatedly try to strike at you and then try to flee from you. Even at birth, the copperhead would have this particular Hershey kiss markings running down their body, as, as along with the yellow tail. Now, a cottonmouth will also have this yellow tail at birth, but not these particular Hershey kiss markings. And they. Copperheads tend to be thinner more than water moccasins. They are still a heavy-bodied pit viper, but when it just comes to length and thickness, a copperhead is usually a bit longer than a cottonmouth, and the copperhead tends to be more on the thicker side. 
That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys want me to keep making these kind of videos and branch out to more herping style videos where I go out and try to catch these animals in real time, drop me a comment, a like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.